We just act like we're talking a minute. It's really good. Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing good today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ashley Smith and this is Kyle Smith and we are the Clever Tiger. If you're not familiar with us, Clever Tiger is an art gallery in downtown Elgin, Texas. We're very, very excited to be bringing you our first live stream event today. And this live stream event features the amazing Juan Villegas and Rosemary Allen. The title of this show is called The Ancient Ones. Let's take a look inside. So for those of you who can't make it to the in-person event, I want to make sure that you check these out. We'll have some available if you contact us. It's Juan and Rosemary's art on the cover of Almost Real Things. Something really cool. Those are free. Hit us up for some. We have some really awesome selections besides the original art today, including some of these. This is my favorite. So this is my horoscope card, and it's by Rosemary Allen. I'm a Scorpio. Be careful. We also have some amazing prints of the original work available, and all of this will be available also online after this live stream. So make sure you check that out if you're not gonna be able to make it today. So let's give you a quick sneak peek of some of the art we have today. This is Rosemary's Wall. We have some really gorgeous stuff. The artists are gonna talk to you about this in just a bit. We have lots of fun planned for you today. Here's one of my favorites because of the selfie opportunity. It's really fun, you can have your arms out, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe we can get Kyle in on it. Let's go, Kyle, get you a selfie? No, he's good. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap around this way. We have more by Rosemary here, some really amazing pieces, and some awesome smaller originals available, even scarves, they have everything for you. Over here, We have an amazing collab, and of course, Juan Villegas' side of the wall. Some really trippy stuff for you today. You gotta see this in person. If you're not gonna be able to make it in person, please contact us and we can set up a private tour for you. These are incredible. Here's one of my favorites. But we'll get more on these in a bit. And, Right now, I think we're going to take it over to... Hey guys. So now we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, introducing Chad Gooch. He's, uh, one of our he's a friend of ours, and uh, he's an herbalist. He knows a lot about plant medicine, and he's going to talk about uh, some of his favorite local herbs. I'd like to uh, thank the Clever Tiger, Juan and Rosemary, for inviting me to speak about some local plant medicines. Um, I've chosen to speak uh, with two plant medicines, uh, Agarita and Bee Balm. Uh, both can be found locally. Um, I'd like to touch a little bit on what uh, brought me to plant medicine. In 2009, I was diagnosed with MS and got on the path of uh, the healer and um, yeah. starting to learn how plants and speak to your body and how your body speaks to you. Um, I think a lot of illnesses are your body trying to communicate with you about how you're showing up in life or how you're maybe not living the best you. So that's how I got into plant medicine. And um, so I have a uh, herbal company, Earthworks Botanicals, and I have a uh, herbal clinic and apothecary, uh, Austin Intuitive Nutrition. Uh, the Earthworks Botanicals has kind of taken off, so I'm uh, 
trying to uh, launch my herb company. Um, so I guess we'll talk a little bit about bee balm first. Uh, bee balm is uh, a, a, a medicine that comes out in the beginning of the summer. Uh, you can, uh, it, it shows up in abundance. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, and uh, it, uh, uh, you can roll down your windows and drive through the hill country and literally smell it. Uh, so this is a regional medicine. It's, uh, it wants to be used for colds and flus. Um, you know, it has other uses, but uh, that's how I use it. Um, it. It has other other things it likes to be with. It likes to be with honey. And it's kind of funny. Bee balm is in the name. Uh, we have. Uh, it also likes to be with clove. And I ask plant. I ask the plants what herbs it wants to be with. Uh, I have my own methods. I'm a muscle tester, so I can ask myself or ask the plant, the energy of the plant, how it wants to be used, or even if it want, even if it wants to be used. Um, uh, this is a uh, cousin of the bee balm, or uh, or it is bee balm, uh, just a different variety. Uh, this is our native variety. Um, the other plant I've chosen is uh, um, agarita. This plant grows in the hill country. And it only grows on the Edwards, Edwards Aquifer. And we're probably pushing the edges of its boundaries here in Elgin. Uh, so this is a very big gut medicine. It's a berberine. Uh, so this would be a regional medicine you would use for gut issues, uh, much like a golden seal. Golden seal is a berberine. Um, so uh, these, uh, this plant, uh, I would say, would not be want to be tamed. You couldn't like grow this. I wouldn't say you would want to grow this in a garden or anything. It's a wild plant, much like the hill country. Uh, where this plant is, uh, can be tamed quite easily and grown in any garden. Uh, so I guess that's about what I have for these plants. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk more on the energetics of the plants more than their uses and how, how you can speak to the plants and how they can speak to you. Uh, you know sit with a plant someday and see what it has to say to you. I would also like to touch on uh, the, I guess, our heritage with medicine. Um, a lot of the knowledge that we have of plant medicine has been lost, and we're in the process of rediscovering our lost knowledge, our, our birthright in many cases. As this was common knowledge a long time ago. so. Uh, I, I'm proud to be a part of the rediscovering process of how this medicine is to be used. So um, this is a, you know, an exciting thing to rediscover some lost ways. Uh, and uh, these beautiful plants have a lot of things to speak to us about. And uh, it's nice to share the knowledge with people who, 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 who want to live in a different way, uh, more, more uh, uh, connected to the earth. The earth has a lot to offer us. That's why I called my company Earthworks. Uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, Chad. We were really glad to have Chad here to talk about plants because it was a huge part of our inspiration for this show. Um, we really tapped into our love and appreciation of plants and looked 
more deeper into um, their healing qualities. Uh, and we felt like that was something that was maybe missing in our lives and could benefit others as well. So definitely check out Chad. Uh, he does awesome work. And we just actually tried his new syrup, the hipster syrup with Earthworks Botanicals. Um, but coming up next, we have a performance piece that we did. Uh, and this was really special to us. Um, just with everything going on right now in the world, COVID, <laughs> protests, everything being turned upside down, we wanted to uh, create something that was inspiring. Uh, we were really feeling a lack of inspiration. And so our performance piece is about the Phoenix. And do you want to talk a little bit about that one? Sure. The main thing that we wanted to do with this uh, performance, we wanted to uh, portray um, kind of like the, the timeline of this year compared to the symbolism of the, of the phoenix uh, representing the rebirth, uh, transformation. And so um, we wanted to present a, a more of a hopeful outcome uh, after all this turmoil um, is over. Um, Angela did a great job. Uh, Tiago da Silva uh, wrote the score for us. Um, so I hope, uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Here we go. To uh, thank the clever... Thank you. 
Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun, uh, a lot of hours of body painting, and we are really grateful for Angela Kaler for dancing for us and t for Tiago da Silva for creating our original score. Um, but we hope that the piece inspires you that the phoenix never dies. It's always going to rise again. So things are going to burn up, they're going to fall, and then we're always going to rise from the ashes and hope that we can dance in harmony with these new energies that come in. Um, we would love to open this up. If anyone wants to comment, share anything that they felt from the performance, uh, we'd love to answer some questions. If anybody has questions, and maybe we can show more of the work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Juan, do you want to pull up the comments? Um, big hello to everybody who's there turning in, tuning in to our first live show. This is kind of wild. You know, we'd love to be in person with everybody, but you know, you know how things are. Let's all stay safe together. Um, oh, yes, so the piece that's up now that you're all seeing is the Phoenix, and this was a piece that I was inspired to create about nine months ago, um, and it just kind of sat in my brain for a while, and then once COVID hit, it really hit, like, that is exactly what we're in right now. We're in Phoenix, uh, and we're burning, so it came to life and it inspired an entire dance piece. Uh, I hope that um, anyone in the surrounding area can make it out and see it in person. It really, it's, it commands a lot of energy and even in the studio, I couldn't always make eye contact with it because it would distract <laughs> me. Um, Just to uh, touch base on the uh, concept of the show in general, we, we call it the Ancient Ones, and uh, we wanted to do a play on words uh, with, with, with what that means. Uh, first, we wanted to portray uh, the inner worlds of our ancestry, you know, in our relationship with, uh, with plants, with animals, with mushrooms, like w with Mother Nature, uh, and, and how that impacted uh, our spiritual growth and our evolution of consciousness. Uh, we got, w we've been trying to bring awareness uh, of connecting back to, to our mother, to the earth, um, to, vi to, to understand, recognize the beauty and, and that we all belong to it and that we need to have a better balance of how we treat it and how we uh, live our lives. And so, but it wasn't until we watched, I think last year was, there were a lot of changes. One of them, we watched uh, Fantastic Fungi. Uh, uh, we went to the uh, MAPS, uh, was it the Science Summit, the Psychedelic Science Summit uh, at the Fair Market in Austin. Uh, we got a chance to live paint there and like listen to all the talks. Um, really inspired by like people like Paul Stamets, uh, bring in mushroom medicine and plant medicine and and not just uh you know, kind of removing the the taboo and the stigma behind it and really seeing the health benefits and the relationship that these plants and these mushrooms have had uh, throughout our lives and so that really sparked a whole <laughs> plethora of, of, of visions and, and ideas and messages and wh whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and so the, it inspired us to, to make this show happen. And now, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd I know a lot of people are, are feeling that way, and uh, it's important for all of us to kind of share those, those thoughts and those feelings and have those conversations, especially now uh, with, the, with COVID and with, you know, the systems crashing and you know we're all waking up to new realities um now it's a time for to bring those energies back into balance you know the 
the the masculine and the feminine uh, b- becoming in harmony again and i think this is a year that, that that's opened up and it's it's really just up to us to make the move and, and change uh, so yeah that's that's where we're driving the inspiration for that and our our collaborative piece uh that was just shown is titled woodland whispers um and we just we knew we had to paint trees <laughs> we love trees if you don't love trees i don't i don't get you um these trees just how powerful they are they their root systems go deep 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 within the earth and then they pull that knowledge from deep within and then they bring it up and they also have that knowledge of high in the sky and they bring it to us and just how the trees work in the mycelium network and um, they're just these beautiful giants that you know maybe we're appreciating but a lot of times we're taking for granted and we can't you know we can't do that anymore like uh, yeah we need them and uh, it's funny because it also began to look kind of like a little storybook uh, <laughs> cover and we it, we wanted it to feel enchanting and inviting and you know the bees are also important for us and our pollinator friends and um, but we need to to cherish our animals and the insects and the fungi all of it all of the kingdoms they all play a huge role in our lives uh, whether we see it or not um Oh, yes. So the next one is Joyride. Uh, This was one of my pieces. And uh, for me, Hummingbird is all about joy and finding the sweet nectars in life. Um, And for me, especially with quarantine, uh, it was a roller coaster of emotions. You know, I could definitely busy myself with creativity but there with everything going on in the world all the bad news being thrown at me um this was for me this piece was a symbol of kind of no matter what life is throwing at me in this spiral I'm gonna find my joy you know and I'm gonna fly through it um and I just, you know, I love hummingbirds. Every time we see one in our yard, we all get excited and rush to the window. It's a special occasion. Um, yes. And then the, so the peacock I painted last year. Um, and the piece is titled Prismatic. And that piece for me is all about coming in to your power and letting yourself shine. Uh, We live in a world now where um, it's not always celebrated when we're shining. And it can be hard to let yourself shine. And I felt that. You know, I had big ideas. That painting was a big idea. And I was like, no, Rosemary, you're crazy. You can't be painting eyes all over everything. That's going to take you a year. You just can't do it. Um, (laughs) And I went for it. And once I was done, I was like, yeah, we can. We can lean into our big ideas. We can dream big, and we can let the world see us shine. Um, and that was that's prismatic. Um, what else do we? What else do we have? The out, the croc, croc eye dial. So this is me delving into Mayan astrology. And my sign is crocodile. And reading about the crocodile, whoa. They're awesome. They're awesome. They're ancient. They're like dinosaurs that are still living on our, on our earth. And uh, the spiritual meaning of crocodile, which I really liked, is that they live on land and in water. So that So they have this deeper intuition, like going deep within the water, and then they bring that to the surface, and they share it. 
Um, so I see the crocodile as a, a very much so a keeper of ancient wisdom. And I felt that the eyes uh, could portray that with the scales, you know, like that they, they know something. Um, so yeah, that's crocodile. dial. <laughs> okay, and the mushrooms. Mushroom medicine's coming. Okay, so mushroom medicine, just after watching Fantastic Fungi and going on this, learning about mushrooms, learning how they help us, not just psilocybin, but all of the other mushrooms, the lion's mane, the reishi, the oyster, the cordyceps, the all of them. I just went on and on, and I was like, I definitely need to pay, um, to show some love and gratitude to the mushrooms because they're such a powerful totem. Uh, and they are also little keepers of wisdom. You know, they've been around a very, very, very long time and have helped aid us in our evolution of consciousness. And um, so they're they're special. <laughs> I can skip it. Um, and then, yeah, next is the uh, is the tree of eyes. And this was more a study for me because I, you know, it's a, it's a little tree. But uh, just down my tree kick of, of loving trees and noticing all of their unique beauty um, and just how they ground us, how grounding it is to be around trees, to be under trees, and that they need some special love and attention because of the way that we have been just like, you know, cutting them down to make room for other things. And we can't do that. We're, we're losing medicine. We're losing uh, these ancient beings, you know, and we can't, we can't just keep cutting down our forests. Um, but yeah, tree of eyes. Just, just this little sweetie, <laughs> and then we did we did joyride, and we can do uh, uh, the great turtle. So, great turtle is actually inspired by a Native American story that's been passed down the creation story. And the story goes that um, there was a time where there was no land and the earth was just water. And there was a great tree in the sky, in the clouds, and a um, people that lived up there. And a girl had fallen ill, and so they had told her to sit under this tree. And I hope I'm remembering this story right. I'm doing my best. Um, but she falls through the clouds with the tree. And so a series of animals try to save her and lift her up from the water because there's no earth. And they see that she is not a water being. Um, so finally, the turtle is the one who is able to bring the earth up and s to give her land to feel safe on. And I just thought that that was such a beautiful story about the earth being on the turtle's back. And uh, I've always loved turtles, and so I, I, I wanted to honor the story. Um, but, yeah. Turtle in the uh, the never ending story, the, the ancient one. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> Beautiful, Rosemary. Thank you. Now well, let's start with. Well, yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit more. Uh, do you want to talk about the collaboration? A little more. Let's let's start with uh, with High Priestess for me. Um, this one I painted at the end of last year, and this one kind of sprouted 
I think what I've been working on ever since. Um, this one, I call it High Priestess because I wanted to give her this, you know, this this uh, important role, uh, emb embodying Mother Nature and being like this um, teacher uh, that's welcoming uh, and inviting us into her world. Um, one thing um, about the High Priestess, I wanted to do the, um, I wanted her to embody kind of all the elements. Uh, and on the fingertips, this is more of like a detailed shot, it says amor, which translates to love. Um, and then you see kind of like that pink energy behind her. And that's uh, being more like a nurturing energy, inviting us, you know, towards like a warm and safe place. Um, so that's the, that's the meaning behind her. Next up, we got uh, Las Musas del Bosque. Um, Las Musas, <laughs> Las Musas del Bosque translates to the Muses of the Forest. And this one was, I painted, the, the, uh, the painted this one at the beginning of 2020, before everything started. And I wanted to portray the mushrooms or these playful ballerinas, you know, that kind of invite you into this whimsical realm. Um, where everything's a little softer, a little nicer, and a little more uh, enjoyable to be in. Um, so these are the, mu the you know the the beings that inspire the creatures of the forest, and you know we were once creatures of the forest, and then they helped us evolve and and branch out and and be where we are now. Somehow we lost our way somewhere along the way, so we're the little road there kind of taking you back to your roots and, and trying to make, make you remember where you came from. This next one is called The Keeper of the Wetlands. And this one was a challenging piece for me. I uh, wanted to embody a spirit that could kind of represent what it means to be uh, to, to be a fusion of, of plant and, and human as far as receiving the sun to get the energy to grab the water from the swamp to nourish itself and, and just be one with the elements um, and have her be you know the now with the, there's an, a huge issue with our water you know the privatization of water and like not having access to clean water you know there's so many issues uh, surrounding our water you know it's a birthright to have to you know have access to water and be able to drink clean water for that matter and not pay for it and, for it. and so you know that was my way of say of bringing some kind of spiritual uh being to to protect it from us and to uh, to you know to keep it sacred for us and and that's what she represents and some of the uh, some of the uh, the symbolism that you see some of the writing that you see on her on her skin um, I took that from uh, an indigenous uh, tribe in Colombia from La Guajira and they have a relationship with water and they have all these symbols in their bases and all the um, the ceramic. Uh, work that they do and uh, I wanted to I'm Colombian and I wanted to have uh, like a connection to to my, my you know to my hometown and I thought that would be a, a nice way to pay homage to that and and kind of tie it all together for me the next one is called revelaciones and it means revelations uh, and this one, this one was a fun piece for me. Uh, I wanted to kind of play around with the. Well, there's a lot of symbolism behind it. The the three beings made out of these, you know, this wood rock formations. Um, they're you know, one's looking. They're looking at different directions, and, and I kind of wanted to kind of uh, to represent what we've seen in the past, what we're currently seeing, and then what we want to see in the future. Uh, and the birds are f uh, 
their pheasants, you know, in a way I've altered them <laughs> a lot, uh, but inspired by pheasants. And the pheasants uh, have a lot to, they're, they're totems of fertility and totems of, uh, you know, like sexual and creative energy. And I wanted to m put that as in uh, fertility and sexuality as like the birth of new ideas. Uh, and bringing new things to life. And the black rabbit, you know, this whole symbolism with the white rabbit taking you down the rabbit hole and, you know, this with, with everything that's been going on. Uh, and and all, all the, the, what the information out there and all the craziness that's happening. I wanted to create that rabbit symbolism, but put it into a, a black rabbit to give it like a little more, um, a darker twist. On taking you, taking you into into the rabbit hole and, and showing you some 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 truths, um, it's a different hole. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and then the light, the, uh, the light behind it is kind of bringing like you know the the lights coming, um, and and it's up to us to uh, to read the information and and, and get to the truth. this year <laughs> well I had a vision the well, okay so the vision started because uh, out of one of my paintings I saw the bird and uh, the, out of the bird I saw a face and then out of a face I created like the first rock formation of the you know the first statue and then out of that everything just kind of just started coming in more <laughs> And it, yeah, it ended up being this really complex uh, I image. Let's go to the next one. This one. This one's called Dreamboat. And the it, it, it has a lot of narrative, in my opinion. Uh, this one is one of the most ancient totems from what I've read. Uh, the origin of the word swan is like the oldest English word. And it has never been changed. And the swan symbolizes like the, the, the true like awakening of yourself and like discovering your inner your inner beauty and your inner truth. And uh, the swan is uh, it's been represented in ancient mythology. You know, like we're talking about um, things like the uh, Greek mythology with Zeus turning into a swan to uh, uh, be with uh, Leda and uh, the, the head of the swan versus the body, you know, having a long leg. That uh, the long neck represents being able to navigate through different realms and different dimensions. Because it's got the head, which it represents the higher, um, higher self, higher realms, higher dimensions, and then the body, which is the physical, the earthly, and then having that long neck, it's like the bridge between those two. Um, so it paints a really beautiful image in my head. It is, it's also the totem of the child, the mystic, and the dreamer. Um, and so I wanted to embody that uh, in the painting. And then, you know, the mushrooms, the mushroom ballerina is looking into it, just kind of like watching this um, boat navigating through the through the seas of all of our emotions and our feelings and, yeah, and everything that's going on. It's a lot of water in, th in, in, in this show, and I haven't, I hadn't really painted water much before, and I just felt called to do that. A lot of feelings, a lot of emotions. Water represents emotions, and, and yeah, th that's what 2020 is all about. one this one's called the seer and this one's a uh, it's probably one of my favorite ones this is as far as the concept uh, looking at the crane and it's funny because sometimes I'll I'll pick a bird I'll paint it and then I'll discover what the bird means and and it somehow it aligns really well with what I was trying to do uh, and it's just very serendipitous the crane uh, represents longevity and creation through focus. And so I wanted to portray the seer as this 
mystical being that comes through by just nature being connected and being like at this at the right place at the right time uh, kind of thing and as you can see there's there's earth there's water there's air and there's fire and the sparks coming out of the clouds from you know the sun's behind it and i wanted that to to exemplify you know just being connected to nature being connected to the elements being being aware uh, of, of all your senses and what when the cr the crane uh this is the crown the crown crane which uh, you know relates to the the crown chakra spirituality you know all wanted to kind of connect those two and the crane uh it's an another ancient symbol that the chinese w uh used it as a symbol it is the uh the totem for the wildlife conservation um organization is the whooping crane i believe and and so there's a lot of ties with with the symbolism of being protective of being uh of being able to create uh, through focus so like it, it teaches us to to stay focused in what we want to do uh and it's very protective of its children oh if it's you know if it's a uh, offspring so you don't really see uh baby cranes in photographs much because they're always hidden so like it shows this like very like parental and like this very nurturing side of them even though they're like really big and kind of intimidating um uh, and and yeah so that's the that's the seer kind of seeing through seeing through the veil of reality and the last one is called the cavern of hidden truths and by this, <laughs> I, I was inspired by the cave paintings. Um, there is one really interesting cave painting I, I'm sure most of you know in Algeria. I'm not sure, I don't remember the, the, the name of the cave, but there's this like mushroom, like bee man covered in mushrooms. Uh, and there's other paintings of like mushroom people. Uh, right? Um, yeah, Alex Gray. Alex Gray showed us the, the um, some of those images last year when we were at uh, at, at Cosm Life Painting, which is really awesome. Um, and so I wanted to kind of play with with that with the history of the cave paintings and, and center these two mushroom beings like kind of birthing out of this cave. Um, and I have there's a lot of like writings on the walls of the painting. Um, then I threw some symbolism in there. You just painted some mushrooms and then, you know, some uh, more like astronomy. And then uh, there's a snake on the other side, um, just tying back ancient uh, ancient religions and depictions of the gods and, and whatnot. And so these, bir these mushroom beings are coming to life. And the skull that these uh that the scenery uh portrays uh represents uh transformation so a death not as in something bad and dark but as as transformation as a as a new chapter a new beginning coming you know s starting starting fresh starting new and that's what i wanted to do with this piece kind of representing how the same plants and the same mushrooms and the same nature uh, that brought us to life can still help us transform and and come out on top uh, collectively as humans. Uh, so that's 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 the meaning behind that. Should drink something. Um, thank you, Juan. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't see him on here. Me either. This is all new. So thank you, really. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. This was a labor of love. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So Betty. Hey, Betty. Um, we chose the subject for our collab. Actually, we were inspired by a gallery space called Tree Garden that had just opened up. And 
it was during South by Southwest, and they were gonna they were gonna have their launch, and we were gonna do some live painting, and we were like, well, we gotta do trees, um, but that never happened, so we continued uh, with our initial idea because we we were invested. Um, let's see. Oh, hey, mom. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, Zach. Great question about the eyes. Um, for me, the eyes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Can you speak to the ever-present multitude of eyes in these pieces? Wonderful question. Um, so for me, the eyes represent the consciousness, the collective consciousness. So they, um, I feel like they all have a different personality and they represent each of us and our, you know, what we contribute and uh, how we see things. And I do, I feel like the eyes opening are about our own awakening and our own individual awakening experience. Um, in the Peacock too, I felt a little bit of that like all eyes on me and a play to, uh, I've had really bad anxiety in the past and that like <gasps> people are looking at me feeling. Um, and so it was like this way of being okay with that. Like, well, I'm looking back at you. Um, Let's see. Ooh, hey, Tay and Luke. Um, let's see. Kelly, hey, Kelly. Do you guys talk about how that happens or process it in conversation, or do you just go with it in reflection? in reference to, I love how your works feel like they influence each other and it's cool to see how you each have embraced being influenced and allow that to create evolution in the work. So yes, we do. We definitely talk about our ideas together. It's like, ooh, I had a vision and then we'll discuss. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we talk about art every day. Uh, that's you know that's just that's what we do uh we do full time we're passionate about it we we feel like this is our purpose our mission so we're talking about it every day all day um we're always sharing dreams we're always sharing inspiration we're always sharing what we're reading you know we have a lot of same interest and likes uh, we're both really into nature uh we're both really into being connected to nature in a more spiritual way um finding ways to to be uh, to be more find you know be more natural you know look for the natural ways of doing things um and so that inspires us pretty much every day and birds we love birds so we bird watch <laughs> a lot um uh, and that inspires us we uh every time we see a, a bird or uh, an animal that shows up in our garden or in our yard we uh we, f we you know we look into it and we find what you know what the symbolism is behind it and you know then we talk about it and that that inspires us yeah even uh, we've even got camila Juan's daughter who lives with us we've gotten her into that too like ooh, what's the chickadee about i want to know oh we can do a meditation we can call in chickadee um love that i also want to say hey Anne marie hey eric Hello, Mary. Hello, Sharla. Hello, Catherine. Thank you. Um, hello, Matt. Oh, I want all of these on my wall, Bonnie. Oh, I'd love that. Um, and then any more questions? We are about to do our drawing. Ooh. Yeah, Mary says, on the theme of collaboration, can you show your collaboration piece and share more about that? Um, so m more about our collaboration piece. Well, we wanted to create a story, and we wanted to give the trees personality. So... Um, 
Uh, this piece took a long time. We started at the beginning of the year and then we didn't finish it until maybe a month ago. And we had a lot of struggle because we couldn't really, it just kept changing. Um, but we wanted the trees to be these ancient teachers, you know, kind of welcoming us to uh, to like a path of, en of enlightenment of sorts. You know, just being more connected to nature, being more balanced. And uh, so that's why you see right at the center of the, of the painting, there's like an illuminated human, you know, just kind of coming out like with, with the ancient wisdom that was given to him by these awesome teachers. Um, and so, and then we have all the elements, we have all the kingdoms, you know, we have the butterfly and the bee representing the, the insect uh, and the p pollinators, which are essential to us. Uh, and we have the mushrooms and there's a little lion's mane ballerina that I made up on the side. And then we have fox and owl, um, which have a lot of symbolism of just being, you know, being wise and being clever and curious. being curious. Um, and so that's kind of like, you know, n nature as a whole inviting you into its ancient knowledge. That's why we call it Woodland Whispers. Yes. Oh, and then Luke asks, do you have any future plans for bigger pieces? We want Juan Rose murals. <laughs> We're open. <laughs> we, do, we don't have any plans yet, but, um, but yeah, we'd love to see what happens. We're always ready to be surprised and delighted by what opportunities present themselves. Um, and then, oh, hola, Rosario. <laughs> hola, mamá. Juan's mom is in Colombia right now, so we're we're global, y'all. Um, oh, and then my mom. Thank you. you. Guys are both so connected. I can see it in your art. Thank you, mom. Um, so we are at 6:59. So yeah, so we're drawing for. We have a beautiful 18 by 24 inch canvas print that we had done of Woodland Whispers, which. We left it home, but it's safe being charged up in our house with all of our creative energy. Um, and thank you to everybody who colored a coloring page. That was awesome. Or posted in your nature outfit or rocking your rose moon apparel. Um, that was really fun to see. And so we'll, we'll pull our winner. Taylor Green. <laughs> Taylor, you won! Oh, awesome. She is. She's there. She's there with Luke. Awesome. Ooh, and then Taylor asks, any artists you both would love to collaborate with? Oh, geez. Well, there's too many. There is one I would, since I'm on this body painting kick, uh, I would love to collaborate with Karen Charles because she uh, really ignited my love of body painting. But um, thank you, everyone, and uh, hope you could see the show in person. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, for supporting, for sharing. Thank you all. <laughs>